Aloha everyone and welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name's Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. Today's video is obviously a little bit different than my typical plethora of reaction videos and boring informational videos. <laughs> In today's video, I'm going to be talking about a topic that needs more attention and something that I'm very, very passionate about, racism in the beauty community. And specifically, if skincare is inclusive or not. And actually, I've had this video planned for a long time, and being that the Black Lives Matter movement is still active, this is the perfect time to talk about it. This video is also a collaboration with one of my favorite YouTubers of all time. I am so honored to be partnering with her on this video, Nappy Headed Hohoba, or as she's also known, T. I love her videos as she provides such a profound outlook on racism racism in the USA, its manifestations in each part of society, but she also incorporates some makeup in there if you are interested. And she surprisingly knows a lot about skincare as well. I was very surprised to find that. And I highly recommend that you check out her videos. I will link her channel in the description box below. She'll be showing up later in this video, but please, if you want to change your life, <laughs> go watch her videos. They're incredible. This video is also a little bit of a collaboration with my second YouTube channel, Selfless. It's focused on social issues that are happening around the world. And I had so many videos planned for Selfless. I had five I've planned over the past few months, all of them fell through because I haven't been able to travel because of COVID, which is really unfortunate, but I'm working on some new content for Selfless. So make sure you go subscribe if you are passionate about issues like this. I highly recommend you subscribe to that channel. And I also want to say 100% of the AdSense revenue from this video will be donated to multiple Black Lives Matter nonprofit organizations in order to make the most widespread and biggest difference possible. I'll include links to all the organizations in the description box below, but it would really mean a lot if you shared this video so that we can raise as much money as possible for these organizations. Thank you. So first, what is the problem? As I'm sure you are aware, particularly if you are a person of color or black, racism is very much alive in multiple aspects of our societies worldwide. Thanks to the Black Lives Matter movement that's been happening, a lot of racial injustices have been brought to light, which is of course critical for moving forward. And I'm sure a lot of you are watching thinking, what is this white boy doing telling me about racism that's happening in this country? I already know. <laughs> I do want to clarify that in this video, I am not speaking for people of color. I am not speaking for black people. I'm solely using my platform as a way to start talking talking about these issues to shed light on them and to get allies, people like me, to start taking action against these mindsets. I am in an extremely privileged position and cannot even fathom the experiences of being the recipient of racially charged messages, racially charged marketing, racially charged hate, etc, etc. And I of course cannot relate to this because hello, pfft. And I want to say this video is not to explain racism or how racism works because girl, if you don't know already, where have you been? <laughs> racism is very much alive in every single aspect of our society. And while it's important that these bigger issues are being brought to light, I also think it's important to analyze microaggressions and under the table racism acts that occur every single day within every single industry, while also bringing attention to the mindsets that we have been conditioned to accept over time. Because as we know, racism is learned and usually invisible to the eye of the beholder. I myself was initially drawn to the skincare industry because I felt that it was so much more inclusive as everyone has skin, any type of skincare product can work for anyone, and there's no uniform or polarizing standard of beauty, right? So I thought. Skincare in comparison to the makeup industry seems to be more inclusive, but actually has an entire unique set of issues that have long been overlooked. And me, yes, the pale ass white boy, I feel a responsibility to talk about this and bring attention to it so that we can each work against the mindset and against the system to be as inclusive as possible in our actions. So first I want to explain my experience when I first recognized that there was racism alive in the cosmetics and skincare industry. I used to work at a luxury retail environment and I was immediately appalled at the limited shade ranges available for foundations, color tints, eyeshadows, etc, etc. And it was very much clear that each of these products were steered towards a very specific demographic of people, none of which were people of color and particularly black people. And I remember one specific experience where I was conducting a training with multiple women to teach them how to do makeup. This is back when I was a makeup artist. I don't do this anymore. Each of the women had a lighter skin tones, except for one of the women. She was black. I was assisting with the training and I watched as the trainer tried to justify to the customer using a foundation that was at least five shades lighter than her skin tone. None of the eyeshadow pigments were strong enough to show up on her skin. She wasn't able to use any face products because they were all too light for her skin tone. And she was left completely excluded from the training. I was furious. I was furious because in that moment, I realized the impact of the limited shade ranges and I saw the emotion she was 
experiencing. And I took her to the side and wrote down an entire list of inclusive brands that she could find at other stores that she could shop and my contact information so she could reach out to me in case she needed any assistance in finding inclusive brands. That's what I mean when I say I was a bad salesperson. <laughs> but it was infuriating to me, not only the lack of shade ranges, but also the mindset in trying to minimize the importance of black identity and using a sale opportunity to justify non-inclusiveness and the racism that these brands continue to exhibit. And have a lot of luxury brands learned from that and changed? No, it's pretty much the same today. Very little has changed for the extreme luxury high-end brands. And that was one of the reasons why I slowly fell out of love with the makeup world. And we know this, makeup brands are still far behind and there's still a level of performative activism when swatches of foundation shades are made on black people that either don't match up with their skin tone or brands justify themselves by releasing one or two shades for an entire demographic of people of color or black people. And it's unacceptable, which was one of the reasons why I was so intrigued by the skincare industry because it left a lot of that behind until I realized that there is a whole new set of problems. Firstly, in the marketing. The cosmetics industry in general has largely been a proponent of Western beauty standards, lighter, brighter, fairer skin. And while of course this is prevalent in the makeup industry, I find it even more so prevalent in the skincare industry. And there are many reasons for this going back hundreds and hundreds of years, but it is undeniable that many of the beauty standards that we are compared to today are reflective of Eurocentric standards of beauty. Lighter skin, blue eyes. Okay, what is going on with my neck? It looks like I have a hickey. Okay, well this just appeared out of nowhere. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Non-textured hair, double eyelids, the list goes on and on and on of beauty standards that are very much central to white people. And knowing this, I cannot even imagine being compared to the mass level of Eurocentric beauty standards while being a person of color or black. It is still mind-blowing to me that skincare brands will use advertisements featuring people who only have light skin. In a seemingly inclusive industry, why are we not incorporating more diversity and representation of other skin tones? And this is reflective of a deeper issue expressed one way through our terminology. If you look at so many skincare products, there seems to be a few words that are commonly used. Brighter skin, brightening, fair, fair fairness, whitening, and sometimes straight up bleaching. There's an association with skincare that is very common around the world that fair skin equals beautiful skin. And for that message to be portrayed, there has to be an opposite, which is that darkness is not beautiful. Fairness has always been spread in our society going back hundreds of years, and due to the effects of colonialism and globalization, this message has been spread far and wide and is deeply impacting other societies, I would say far more even than our own. In countries like the Philippines and India, marketing and advertisements will show someone with darker skin as undesirable and then compare them with a person who has fair light skin and praise them as beautiful or attainable. And I'm not even going to talk about some of the racist marketing that has been used in Korea because pff, who am I to call out other people when I'm a part of a race that is actively contributing to this mindset? And by no means am I blaming these societies because we all know where this mindset came from. If you don't know, open a history book and see who coined the term conquering. That'll answer your question. If you wanna see examples of what I'm talking about, go to my sources in the description box below. There are multiple videos showing how bad these advertisements are. My mouth dropped open watching some of them. And even in my travel across Asia and the South Pacific, skincare brands do not hold back in this spread of very obvious racism. And not only that, living in Hawaii has also showed me this. Just down the street at a chain drugstore that's across all the islands, you will find multiple whitening creams that are extremely popular used to remove the pigment from the skin in order to appear fairer, brighter, or as some of the products say more white. And this terminology like bright and brightening has become so commonplace that a lot of times people don't realize the association and how it does contribute to this Eurocentric set of beauty standards. And while I'm an obvious proponent of brightening any dark spots on the face from skin damage, it is reflective of so many cultural and societal issues that have not been resolved. And I know someone in my comment section is going to be like, isn't tanning the same? Like people who want to tan, they want to change their skin tone. Isn't that exactly the same thing? No, it's not. And I just want to ask you a question. Are people actively discriminated, prevented from getting jobs, prevented from having various opportunities or relationships because they aren't tan? No, that's not happening. But on the flip side, with people of darker skin tones and specifically black people, that happens every single day. Statistically, globally, there's a higher chance that you will get higher paying jobs if you have fairer skin than if you have darker skin. There are countless statistics that I'm not even going to go through showing the obvious preference of fairer skin in a workplace environment, in a modeling environment, in the entertainment industry, and while I would consider it to be bad in the USA, like I was saying before, in some other countries, it is deeply ingrained into the culture and you're forced to either conform or be rejected by society. It will go and hit the melanin. When the hit melanin is hit, it will get destroyed. Then the patient will feel a sense of glowing and a brightness on the face. How did you decide to, to get this treatment? I had to go to the job, so I had to go to the interview. So people 
पूरा मेरा डॉक्यूमेंट सब कुछ अच्छे थे बट बिकॉज ऑफ लुक उन लोगों ने मुझे रिजेक्ट कर दिया कि फेयरनेस होगा तो मेरे को कोई बेटर अच्छा जॉब मिलेगा This understanding is so widespread that even on TikTok there are tens of thousands of videos joking about how lighter skin people behave versus darker skin people behave. And there's a large population of people here who are still victim to this toxic cultural mindset. Nearly all of my friends at my university used whitening creams or products that claim to brighten their skin. And due to the popularity of these products that I have seen at the drugstore and the sheer amount that people buy, it's very much an unresolved problem. Now being me obsessed with ingredients, I first want to talk about some of the downsides of the ingredients used in these brightening products and then T is going to talk about the cultural toxicity of this mindset that is prevalent specifically within the black community. So whitening products are extremely popular globally, and a lot of the ingredients used in whitening products around the world have been banned in certain countries, specifically in South Africa, Europe, and Canada. And the reason why these laws exist was I believe inspired by South Africa where whitening products were becoming very popular due to the still existing racism post apartheid that affects the country to this day that limits people from getting jobs and opportunities because of their skin tones. And within these whitening products ingredients like mercury and glucose glucocorticoids were found, those ingredients being specifically toxic to human health and very damaging to the skin over time, which is why a lot of these ingredients have been banned. If you want to learn more about that, I have multiple videos from Refinery29 and Vox that you can watch. And still around the world, it's very risky using certain whitening products because sometimes there's undisclosed ingredients that provide that bleaching ability but are very risky and harmful to the skin. But domestically in the USA and in other countries, there's a specific ingredient being used very commonly, hydroquinone. Now hydroquinone has a lot of skin benefits in terms of brightening dark spots, getting rid of hyperpigmentation and sun damage, and it can be really beneficial at low concentrations in very specific uses over short periods of time for getting rid of problems. I've used it before to get rid of dark spots on my face, it works amazingly. And while there is widespread vilification of this ingredient, I don't believe that the ingredient is inherently bad. It's more so at what concentration and how it's used that determines whether it's good or bad. And my concern that I see when I go to the drugstore here in Hawaii is that I find hydroquinone creams with the highest over-the-counter concentration being sold in a face and neck cream. So people are using it not in specific spots, but all over their skin to make their entire face more fair, essentially changing the skin tone because it changes the pigment within the skin. And the problem with this is that hydroquinone makes your skin extremely sensitive to the sun. And when not paired alongside a very strong sunscreen can actually create a lot of skin damage and skin problems down the road. And there is not a widespread understanding that these whitening creams need to be paired alongside a sunscreen. They're not using it alongside sun protection and only increasing the risk of serious serious sun damage and skin cancer down the road. And if you know my channel, you know that I'm constantly talking about sun protection and making sure you're as protected as possible. And that's where some of my concern lies with this, with the skin health. But what I find far more worrisome is the root problem, the root mindset that is fueling this desire for fairer skin. Why does it exist? Why do people feel the need to use these brightening and whitening creams? And why is it so looked down upon to accept your skin tone for people of color and black people? Here is T or Nappy Headed Hobaba to talk more about that. Historically, the messaging around most, if not all things beauty related has been extremely narrow. The focus has always been on portraying and upholding whiteness as supreme, along with things like thinness and straight silky hair. And all of these elements are folded into a hyper prescriptive blueprint of how one should perform femininity according to a very particular set of rules that decree what is and is not beautiful. And this highly enforced beauty ideal leads to both covert and overt denigration of pretty much anything that deviates from this standard. When whiteness is deemed supreme, blackness isn't just excluded, blackness becomes completely antithetical to notions of beauty. Black people to this day are regularly excluded from the discussion around beauty entirely. Black women in particular are marginalized as decidedly not beautiful, as masculine, unworthy, aggressive, and even ghetto. That is until our ghetto swag gets jacked by an interloping fraud and then suddenly it becomes edgy. Even when you look at a product like sunscreen, something that we all need to be wearing regardless of complexion because let's face it, the way climate change is set up, we got about that long before we are living in a fifth season dystopia. Anyway, in too many cases, and by the way, too many cases means more than zero, it is easier for me to find a skin bleaching cream than it is for me to find a sunscreen that won't leave me looking like I just put an entire bottle of lavender color corrector all over my face. And though we have made some progress, largely credited to black entrepreneurs within the beauty industry who 
have built their own tables rather than beg for a seat at a table that continues to ignore us. Not a single month goes by where we don't see another product launch from some brand that is making it clear that they don't care that we exist. By and large, the beauty industry still blatantly puts whiteness above all and proximity to whiteness second. They're still very much operating under this rule that the closer one is to whiteness, the closer one is to beauty. It is no coincidence that we see so many tinted products coming out where black people are left to ask, tinted for who? It is not an accident that most foundations arrange their shades from lightest at the top to deepest on the bottom. Whiteness is always put above and before everything else, including brownness, and brownness is therefore put above and before blackness. It is a hierarchy. It wasn't even that long ago that our features and frankly our very existence was being mocked and scrutinized in minstrel shows, freak shows, and literal human zoos. This conversation around inclusivity within the beauty industry has never been only about getting more foundation shades. The pathetic foundation shade ranges that we see are a symptom of the disease. It is time for real honesty and real accountability in terms of how we reimagine the business of beauty. This has to be more than hashtag inclusivity and some woke marketing. The construct of beauty as it exists now is harmful and it is time to dismantle it and do away with the self-appointed gatekeepers who decided that whiteness is the beauty standard. As black people and other people of color, only some of us know better than to define our own beauty by how close we are to or how far we deviate from whiteness. Many others are still unlearning or have yet to begin to unlearn centuries of conditioning in order to be able to begin to heal from the generational trauma of this messaging. We all have to work toward understanding and internalizing that we are not excluded from being beautiful. It is up to each of us to take accountability for our decisions because that is how we either tear down or uphold this construct with who we uplift, who we include, what we buy, and perhaps most importantly, what we do not buy. So as you can see with what she was saying, this underlying mindset that fairer is better affects so many people and oftentimes puts races on a totem pole, black people being oftentimes the most excluded and put at the bottom. And these specific issues have been more prevalent in social media thanks to people like Jackie Ina, I've linked her video in the description box below, and other influencers who have talked about the harmful effects of promoting and advertising whitening or brightening creams around the world. And I personally know people from the Philippines where their family significantly pushed and almost forced them into using whitening products rather than accepting the skin that they're in. And it leaves people of color and black people to bear the burden themselves of having to not only overcome this cultural toxic mindset, but also have to accept the skin that they're in and recognize it as beautiful. Something that I already have difficulty doing as a white person. I can't even imagine the difficulty that they have to go through. They're essentially set up against their family, their culture, their society, all just because they want to love the skin that they're in. And this needs to change. So what can you do? What can we do to help? First, First, like I always say, you vote with your dollar. Support brands that are pushing for inclusivity. Actively avoid supporting whitening products, fairness products. And we need to stop thinking that skincare is inclusive, that it's not racist, it's open-minded. And we need to identify the shortcomings so that we can change them. And in doing research for this video, there are multiple brands that I discovered globally advertise whitening products that I will no longer be supporting. For any white allies out there, celebrate people of color, celebrate black people, support them, support black creators, reinforce the idea that all skin is beautiful, compliment black people and people of color on their skin tone, how beautiful their skin is. Little things like that can make such a positive difference in addition to not supporting brands that are essentially creating this problem. When you see a brand making a step in the right direction for inclusivity, celebrate that, push them to do more. Contact or message brands that aren't being inclusive and explain your reasoning as to why you're not going to support them. When you hear a person of color or a black person express that their skin isn't beautiful or that they're too dark, fight against that. Work with them to fight against that mindset. Encourage them, remind them that they're beautiful. They've actually actively been ostracized by society, it's up to us as white allies to provide as much help as possible to help them overcome that. If you hear your family or friends talking about or supporting these toxic beauty standards, educate them, tell them why this is wrong. Within the beauty community, support creators of color. We need more diversity and representation as a sign to brands that they need to change their behavior. There are so many things that we can do, and I've linked multiple videos in the description box below that detail how you can make a difference so that you're not just listening to me. And most importantly, keep this mindset. Remember, this is a problem that affects everyone 
and don't overlook these issues because they seem small in comparison to other issues. Injustice here within the skincare community is injustice everywhere, and it's up to us to make a difference. Oh, that pretty much sums up all of my thoughts that I've wanted to express. I could go on and on and on and on and talk about the cultural componentry, the history of this, more actionable steps, specific brands. I could go on and on and on, but I don't have the time for that. And I'm sure you are far too bored right now. <laughs> but thank you so much, T, for collaborating with me on this video. Please go subscribe to her channel. And don't forget to subscribe to my second YouTube channel, Selfless, if you are interested in seeing more content like this, because I have a lot planned. Thank you all so much for watching and feel free to share this video to help raise money for nonprofit organizations. And I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.